Let me ask you a question. Okay. How do you feel about people, but how do you feel about people calling you a culture vulture? I feel like he exploits black people as much as he possibly can. Um, the man won't even show his face. He's not even on camera. He's a voice. America is a little more racist than we give it credit for. You know? I think you're trying to step on his back to make yourself look like you're some like a progressive. What you do is way more detrimental to black people than him saying that word. You can say that. Actually, I think it is. Black TV, I feel like he disrespected hip hop. I feel like he disrespected Louis Farrakhan. I feel like he, did, he didn't say sorry. So Vlad TV or anybody's watching this, I would like you personally, Vlad, to take every video that Nori. If you've been on YouTube long enough, there's almost no way you haven't heard that deep voice behind the camera of interviews with the tag Vlad TV. The man has spoken to virtually everyone in the entertainment industry, right from executives to upcoming rappers. And in all of this, one most constant thing is that these interviewees have been black. Man, you already make me nervous. <laughs> People come up there and do your show and go to jail. No, they don't. Yes, that's, they that's, don't. that's not true. Turns out that might have been a play all along, and the industry's biggest black celebrities are done having it. If you're only showcasing like the worst stereotypes of black people, which I don't, but constantly, or like the majority of the stuff, but like, 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 you can say no, but we know what time it is. Around the whole world, it's international. What's good, man? Oh, man, everything good, man. You know, we got the plaque last year, you know, the mixtape of the year award, you know, making my wall look real nice right now. You know, shout out to my man Justo. What could Vlad have done to get canceled by people who laughed with him on his show? For starters, most people probably don't know the man is white. Yep, first shocker there, but there's still so much more left. Considering the famed host has maintained an image that is only identifiable by his voice and his watermark, most people have been wrongly led to believe Vlad isn't a controversial person, but this couldn't be a bigger misconception. How could someone behind the camera cause any trouble? Well, the thing about Vlad is that people don't just believe he's a poser who seems to exploit members of the black community for his own gain, but some of our biggest celebrities have even tagged him as a snitch. I know Vlad, working with the feds, how could it be? Well, because some people believe there's so much more to Vlad than the uh, news has been feeding us, people have now decided to take matters into their own hands, digging deep into the host's past, and many of the revelations have matched the allegations being brought up by our celebrities. You off of black, black culture, you taking all, you know, you making money off black culture, you, you with black girls, shame on them, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. And now, you know, because they're giving you that confidence to talk crazy to us. Has Vlad really always been a different person than we thought? From the new details coming out about him, it seems there might be a lot the world has missed about Vlad's true personality. And the questions surrounding him even get more intense when you find out he actually used to have a black scent. Check it out, baby. It's your boy, DJ Vlad, the butcher. Yeah, that I mean, you over here on Video City. We show for the streets, you heard? You're from Ukraine. Because of things like these, people have come out to point the finger at him for being a culture vulture whose express goal seems to be taking advantage of the black community and the audience it has, something that other more controversial celebrities have called him out for. If we want to talk about the negative influence of something like that and, and of, of raw negativity, your raw negativity impact is way higher than his. So I personally don't even think you're in the position to criticize him. Although most of the evidence matches the view these celebrities have of him, there have been a few times when Vlad was on the right side and the media has been there to catch it all, thus casting more merit on everything being said about him. Welcome to the mystery that is DJ Vlad. Vlad interpreted it as, oh, just throw rocks at Jews, which wasn't the truth, he lied. DJ Vlad might be one of the most successful people at the forefront of media entertainment. With a career in the industry running as far back as the late 90s, the host has been able to establish his position as a major figure in the entertainment industry. However, the man has left a trail of destruction in his wake, something the world is just now starting to catch up on, following a string of controversies he's been caught up in recently. Vlad is better known as the founder of Vlad TV. As previously mentioned to many, he has established himself as a prominent figure in hip hop media. However, this sentiment isn't unanimously shared. After all, DJ Vlad has had his fair share of controversial moments led by his interviews, which many have found to be exploitative. Most recently, he's been under intense fire for trying to get a black professor fired from Princeton, which many have attributed to white fragility. 
But a couple more controversies have surrounded DJ Vlad over the years. One of the primary criticisms directed at DJ Vlad revolves around his interview techniques. Numerous hip hop artists have publicly criticized DJ Vlad for his interview style, particularly his choice of questions. Do you go by that same set of rules? What though, Talon? Of course, that's, that's, we gonna live like, like right. we gonna like, we gonna rock out. So if your own child gets, gets that's not, that's not up for, that's none of the law's business. Some feel he crosses boundaries and exploits sensitive topics for clicks and views. Many of his questions are provocative, aiming at crime, violence, and legal issues among predominantly black artists. This approach has led to accusations that he sensationalized serious issues for entertainment value. Further, DJ Vlad employs a distinctive style of interview that many view as interrogative. For example, the New Jersey rapper Sue Surf called him out on this saying, realistically, there is such a thing as bait, you're a baiter. Of course, you wouldn't say, I got anybody indicted, but you fish, you feel me? And some of my peers, some of the people that sat in this seat aren't honey smart or witty enough to know when there is bait being swung their way or when they are supposed to dip the bait. The host's odd way of interviewing people has led to other alleged revelations about him. Another contentious aspect of DJ Vlad's career is suspicion about his cooperation with law enforcement. Several interviewees have raised concerns about statements made during interviews being used against them in legal proceedings. And if we're being honest, his interview style doesn't help his case. During discussions, guests sit in front of the camera. At the same time, Vlad, reportedly at another location, asks probing questions that can come across as highly incriminating and potentially suggestive of a setup. You got a couple indicted. No, I didn't get anybody indicted. You got a couple Get a single person indicted. Who did I get indicted? Who did I get indicted? I, I ain't about to get, open another indictment on who you indicted. One particular case from 2020 has several fans convinced of Vlad's involvement with the authorities. Fans on Twitter are convinced DJ Vlad is responsible for rapper Casanova's legal plight because of a particular tweet that was fired off on Monday night, December 7th, back in 2020. The Twitter post featured a YouTube video from Hip Hop Media Uncensored, which suggests the FBI pulled information from Vlad TV interviews, despite the indictment making no such mention of Vlad TV. Hip Hop News Uncensored reports the feds had been watching Casanova since 2010, meaning they would have had plenty of time to dig into Casanova's media appearances. People familiar with Vlad TV are sometimes suspicious of not only his interview style, but also the specific questions he asks about his subject's criminal activity. From what I understand, you used to rob people bare face. Mm -hmm. No mask. Nah. And then I heard you would, you would rob people and then take pictures with them at the club. The information used in the YouTube video comes from the initial indictment that was unsealed in White Plains Federal Court. 18 untouchable Guerrilla Stone Nation gang members, including Casanova at the time, stood accused of crimes ranging from M and assault to narcotics T, but there's so much more to it. Casanova, born Caswell Sr., was facing life in prison before the Southern District of New York made its case against him. He was among 18 alleged untouchable Guerrilla Stone Nation gang members indicted in New York. Casanova was charged with three counts related to teeing, including conspiracy to commit racketeering, distribute controlled substances, and possession of a firearm, according to Vulture. The Brooklyn artist turned himself in, Mayao.com reported. Casanova has been interviewed on Vlad TV several times. It's not that he's getting cats hemmed up, it's the way he speaks. I can hear the smug a smile whilst he asks about plights, choices, and repercussions he will know nothing about ever. This culture is for his foraging only. Then back to Calabasas, watch him cite Noi though. Fans called for a boycott of Vlad TV, don't just stop watching Vlad, stop effing with content like that entirely. All it does is make a proof of concept and spawn more like that, one tweeted. Another person wrote, and Vlad said my name is on no paperwork, like in you definitely, the police. Assistant US Attorney Shiva Lagaraja wrote, using his public platform, he, Casanova, has amplified the message of the gang, both through his music and his social media profiles. Brooklyn-born rapper Casanova pleads guilty to federal racketeering and charges. The US Attorney's Office claims Casanova led the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang and directed a multi-state conspiracy in that role. Inner City Press, 
the outlet that meticulously covered Takashi 699 Inez racketeering trial on Twitter, confirmed information Casanova supplied during his interviews, presumably with Vlad, was used in the indictment. But as mentioned earlier, there's no mention of Vlad TV in the indictment. Fans, however, weren't the only ones to talk about it. Legendary brand Nubian, New York rapper, producer, actor now tuned podcaster Lord Jamar, also weighed in on the Casanova 2X federal case and the possible involvement or not of DJ Vlad from Vlad TV. Vlad of uh, Vlad. Oh, Vlad, Vlad TV. He was in there as a means to indict. Casting over two times. Lord Jamar was, of course, a longtime regular guest on Vlad TV for many years on various social issues, including racism, sizeism, homophobia, as well as a range of hip hop topics before they split. With parts of Vlad's interview being allegedly used for the current indictment, opinions are somewhat split into some sections as to whether it is DJ Vlad's line of questioning that gets some of his overly sharing guests in trouble, or whether, in fact, his guests should take more personal responsibility with the answers in which they provided. With some claiming that Vlad is a culture vulture, the Soviet immigrant from Kiev who became the household entity in hip hop media and entertainment, now known as DJ Vlad, has had a long running and strong association with hip hop since settling in California as a young child in the late 1970s. Uh, he released mixtapes, produced documentaries, as well as earned a degree in computer science from the University of California, Berkeley, and worked in a variety of computer corporate positions. This has given the platform a reputation for having a curse, the Vlad curse. People have alleged that whoever Vlad interviews gets arrested. Some examples of artists include Kifo D, who was arrested for the murder of Tupac Shakur, and Rallo, who was apprehended and accused of running a cross-country operation. It looked like he was reaching, yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you actually see a gun? Oh, shit. Once he got the region, I got the ducking. Speaking to Revolt TV about the curse, Vlad said he didn't believe it to be true. I mean, apart from the Kefi D situation, I've never heard of that actually happening, he said. Just to keep it 100, like, I've never heard of our stuff actually being used, an interview being used against someone in a case that they actually talked about. In my rationale for the Keith D situation, he wrote an effing book. As controversial as these subjects are, these aren't the only reasons he's made the news in recent times. Two years ago, Royce to 59 called flat out for disrespecting Minister Louis Farrakhan, and Twitter wanted him canceled then too. The cool kids Chuck English, media personality Scotty Beam, journalist Bruce Coleridge, as well as Nora, are among the many that joined the war. Vlad TV, I feel like he disrespected hip hop. I feel like he disrespected Louis Farrakhan. I feel like he, did, he didn't say sorry. So Vlad TV or anybody's watching this, I would like you personally, Vlad, to take every video that Nori is on your site and take it off. Agreed, Vlad has built up a sizable platform throughout the years, amassing interviews with many of the game's rising rappers, not to mention countless conversations with OGs and veterans. And while some have criticized the media personality for a variety of reasons, many rappers have continued to sit down with Vlad TV to the point where his platform boasts one of hip hop's most expansive archives. However, DJ Vlad has found himself on the receiving end of a widespread movement, one that recently found Noor taking a vocal stand against him. It started when Vlad made the disparaging remarks about Louis Farrakhan during an interview with D.L. Hewley, which went on to upset artists like Royce 59 and Nick Cannon, one of Vlad's frequent collaborators. The heels of, of Farrakhan's 4th of July speech. Sure. Where he said, uh, those of you that say you're Jews, I will not give you the honor of calling you a Jew. You're not a Jew. You're so-called, you're Satan. Months ago, Vlad spoke about Minister Louis Farrakhan, misquoting comments that Farrakhan made about Jewish people. Many artists have come forward against Vlad, and Cannon questions whether or not DJ Vlad is a culture vulture. Vlad took an interesting turn in 2020. Vlad got out of pocket a little bit, walked on some landmines, and he misquoted, said Cannon, during a conversation with comedian Godfrey, who has also done several appearances on Vlad's show. However, Godfrey disagreed. It wasn't a misquote. A misquote is when you take one little word and blah, blah, blah. He straight effing lied. Vlad took an interesting turn in 2020. He misquoted. It wasn't a misquote because a misquote is when you like take one little word and blah, blah, blah. He straight 
lie. Canon added, so when we see a platform that we don't own and someone's monetizing, making money on, and then you don't operate off of our code or what we see fit, we can't F with you. He saw us as commodities. Nick Cannon questioned how Vlad is different than J. Edgar Hoover, the first director of the FBI who targeted Black and civil rights movement leaders. Though Vlad maintained that he had misquoted the minister, many rappers felt that his statement was disingenuous, to the point where the narrative has since begun to turn against the interviewer. So much so that Noriaga officially issued a public request that Vlad remove all videos involving him from the DJ Vlad YouTube channel. Vlad TV, I feel like he disrespected hip hop, says Nor. I feel like he disrespected Louis Farrakhan and he didn't say sorry. So Vlad TV or anyone watching this, I would like you personally, Vlad, to take every video with Nori that's on your site to take it off. I'm asking you that as a favor. I know I could have called you on the phone, but this is a public situation, not a private situation. So this is your boy, Nor, signing off. I don't want anything to do with that. Most recently, Vlad shared his thoughts on Kendrick Lamar's new Drake diss track, Not Like Us via X. He commented on the mix, suggesting potential improvements. If DJ Vlad, Kendrick's Not Like Us needed a better mix. It takes away from the song. This occurs to me as being like maybe the most docile possible commentary you could have on this song. Morgan Jerkins, an author, editor, Princeton University professor, and fame producer Darkchild's niece, advised against involvement in the viral conversation. She wrote, you are white, this is a black folk affair. Vlad responded swiftly and firmly to the remark. He even went as far as tagging Princeton directly in his reply, which many have remarked was in extremely poor taste. Wait, so a professor at at Princeton is telling me that a white person shouldn't be allowed to voice their opinion about hip hop? Is that how you interact with your students? The exchange continued as Vlad threatened to contact Princeton, again tagging the university. He then insinuated that she might lose her job at Princeton if he followed this action. Although Vlad tried to backtrack on his tweets the next day, saying he was only defending himself, Jerkins pointed out that he had already contacted the university by tagging them. Even the author Mark Lamont Hill tried to call Vlad out for weaponizing his whiteness, but Vlad instead made scalding comments about Lamont losing his job. Altogether, this entire exchange in the eyes of several fans felt like something out of a Karen playbook, as DJ Vlad allegedly weaponized his white fragility in an attempt to get a black woman fired. The back and forth effectively had several fans talking with several people calling Vlad out, like this user who wrote, who keep holding the door for Vlad, let the door lock. Another person wrote, why are you talking? Hash you people are always in our conversations. You're just another pink colonizer, shut up Patrick. In the end, Vlad apologized for how he handled the situation, tweeting, after considerable reflection, I would like to apologize to at Morgan Jerkins for tagging her job in my replies during our Twitter exchange last weekend. But even then, the people weren't buying any of it. To kick off the second part of his roast, one person wrote, notice you didn't say flat out you were wrong. Apologizing is one thing, admitting you were wrong is another. After considerable reflection, sounds more like unexpected backlash. Take a class and learn from your mistakes. At Morgan Jerkins, you are queen. A second user wrote, since you're always in black people's business, you should know that we only accept apologies through reparations. While it may seem like Vlad is always the problem in every exchange with people in the black community, there have been times black people took his side against other black people, one of which was when the host tried to have Marlon Wayans on his show. Only days back, Vlad spoke about Marlon Wayans during an interview with Ari Spears. According to the host, he and his people reached out to Wayans for an interview, as he's known to do, but the reply he got wasn't what he was used to. Vlad said Marlon Wayans not only asked to be paid a $40,000 fee, but the actor also asked for 30% of the total revenue from the proceeds of the interview. You know how much they asked for a Marlon Wayans interview? I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> 40,000 plus 30% of all future revenue. To both Vlad and Spears, 
it seemed like a stretch because there was no way the host was going to even make that much regardless of how well the video does. To some fans, Vlad's past is the reason Marlon was able to ask for that much. One user wrote, Vlad made a mistake by normalizing paying everyone for interviews. The Breakfast Club and Hot 97 don't pay for interviews. Anyway, both Vlad and Spears also agreed that such an amount wouldn't be that much of a stretch if they were having someone else over. An example of someone in this case is Cat Williams, whose interview with Shannon Sharp earlier this year allegedly made the former athlete more money than he'd earned at the NFL. This effectively implied that Vlad thought Marlon didn't have the pull as a star to make a request that high, something fans took to mean he was butthurt by the refusal. One person wrote, Vlad be in his feelings when folk don't want to do petty business with him, S.O. Shannon and Stephen A. As it would turn out, this was not the only time Vlad had done something like this. He allegedly also did it to Fast and Furious star Tyrese Gibson. According to the news at the time, Tyrese was fed up with DJ Vlad using him for Vlad TV's clickbait. In a since deleted Instagram post from about a year ago, the Black Rose crooner seemingly took offense to Boozy Badaz labeling him the most hurt person on Instagram on the controversial platform. To fuel the flame, Tyrese shared receipts of VLAD requesting him to appear in an interview for $10,000. Your A is hurting because even after you offered me 10K, I turned down your corny A Culture Vulture show. Haven't you used black people enough? What's the dude's name who talks off camera, who owns Valad TV? Can y'all pull his tax returns? Ugh, wrote the former TGT member, 44. How much is he leeching off of black culture? This dude already had four people on his show and he randomly keeps bringing my name up, laughing about my divorce traumas, laughing about my crying video, and trying to milk my traumas and pains in the clickbait for his a show. He later urged fellow established artists to ignore Vlad's requests unless he's paying $10,000 or more, which would perfectly explain Marlon's choice. But speaking of being a culture vulture, a lot of damaging details have been published about Vlad through the years, with many tagging him as an op to black people. Reports say don't just think Vlad is an opponent of black people. They also think he just loves people who hate black people. Word has it that his reputation is built on his ability to get his subjects to name names and start beefs. If you go to Vlad, you're going to jail. Right. At some point. Or you're telling on yourself. Or you're right. telling on yourself. In recent years, several people have maintained that the only thing Vlad's platform has focused on achieving is the deterioration of the Black image. Ever since, several stars have even refused to go on Vlad's show because, as Chicago MC Vince Staples noted, I just ain't trying to sit down and talk about gangbanging for 30 minutes. And while Vlad might not work with law enforcement officers or government spy agencies, as some have suggested, to Vlad TV viewers, he is someone who gives information and makes a practice, especially for a financial reward of informing against others for violations of penal laws. Case in point, when he sat down with streetball legend Pee Wee Kirkland, Vlad wanted to focus on Kirkland's life as a dealer. Most recently, as previously mentioned, the former tech entrepreneur has been in the spotlight and for his interview with Dwayne Keith D. Davis, which as mentioned earlier, is alleged to have directly led to the man's indictment for being involved in the of Tupac Shakur. Vlad says he enjoys his anonymity and that fame comes with a price that he is not willing to pay. This is why he doesn't show his face on camera, not because he is acting or executing in secret. Either way, many believe he is operating undercover, but at other times, some people believe Vlad just hates them. This was seemingly made obvious to the fans when he allegedly tried to disparage Tyrese and fought with Rick Ross by revealing Ross's job as a former corrections officer as if it was something to be ashamed of. He seems to have a remarkable ability to recall and remind his interviewees who slighted them. What was that we said about starting beefs again? Anyway, while everyone may be wrong about Vlad and why he chooses to do what he does, the fact that so many people seem to share a similar perspective of the host and his reasons for being interrogatory with his mostly black interviewees doesn't exactly pass the best message about the former DJ. But we won't be the judge. What do you think? Tell us in the comments. That's it. Goodbye.